Yeah, she's feeling pressure. Uh-oh. Check her. Check me, please. Okay. I'm trying to concentrate on your breathing. You're doing great. There's no way to know if we'll get a minute or a day or... A minute, 11 minutes, 11 days. No, no way to know. In some ways, I'm really excited because I get to see him, but in other ways, it's dread. It's terrible dread. He is in imminent danger when he leaves my womb. Hold it, blow it out. Take deep breath. Take deep breath. Oh. 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 Okay, look down. Look at him. He's beautiful. Come on, sweetie. You, you gotta cry for mommy. Oh, oh goodness. Oh, oh. Oh. He's having a hard time breathing. That's okay. He sounds like you do when you snore. <laughs> <laughs> People would ask questions, you know, or, oh, do you know what you're having? And yes, it's a boy. Oh, you must be so excited. Is it your first? Yes, it's our first. You know, have you done the nursery? Or um, then they would start sharing their story of their baby. And, you know, we're not planning a shower. We have other things we have to plan and do. This is a monocella ball right here. Actually, it's one like this, but okay. this shows you how it's... Um, we went for our first, first sonogram in December. That was pretty exciting. you remember that? Mm-hmm. Hear the heartbeat? Mm-hmm. See the little peanut? The little peanut? It was small, like a gummy bear. Mm -hmm. And then our next sonogram was scheduled, and we were finding out if it was a boy or a girl. And we went in, and they said... It's, it's a boy, but... Wait, there's a few problems. So when the eyes are really close together, we start thinking, or abnormal, uh -huh. the first thing we think about is a brain abnormality. She noticed more than one or two problems. There were four, five, six problems. She told us that trisomy 18 or 13 children, um, if he had either one of those, that it's fatal. That terminating the pregnancy was an option for us. I can't believe how pretty you are and how good your color is. It's just hard to imagine something's wrong with him that you can't fix in this day and time. <laughs> Look how cute he is. No. <laughs> that was right in my mouth. Oh, that was right in my face. Oh, that was right in my nose. For us, we didn't believe that God promised that we would have a child. We got our miracle. We've gotten to know him. We've gotten closer. So we're getting miracles every day. I mean, he's alive another day. It makes us feel good to see that he's doing stuff he's supposed to be doing. You know, we know we don't have much time, but at least it lets us know he's doing some of the things right now that he's supposed to. So every hour, minute counts. In some ways, you know, Thomas is fortunate because he won't experience first broken heart. His dad will never spank him and he'll never get grounded. He won't get picked on at school. The only thing Thomas will ever know of this world is love. Thomas, you're going home. You're going home, big boy. Can you believe this? He's got strong hands, long fingers. He's just got those little skin tags, which they could remove those. And they could fix all of the cranial, I mean the cleft palate and the bilateral cleft. But they can't fix his brain issues or his heart issues and his kidney issues. And he's just got too many issues to start operating on him because the trisomy 13 would still still get him in the end. Daddy, why don't you take him and put him on your shoulder and burp him because he's not making a whole lot of noise. Oh, no. Yeah, put him on your shoulder, Daddy. He's turning I know. Put him on your shoulder and we'll go to the bedroom. He's not breathing. Honey, put him on your shoulder. There you go. Oh, yeah, that's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. There you go. Here you go, Daddy. Just keep his head on the side so anything that comes out will come out on the side. Here, here's the blanket for him. I'm afraid to say goodbye, but I can't imagine what it would have been like to not have had this opportunity to go through this with him and to get to know him and to um, 
love him. It really has been amazing, as opposed to just shoving it down and forgetting about it and pretending that his life didn't happen or it didn't matter. You turned my world upside down, you did. Thomas, I must have any of my belly. It's such a good place for you. I'm sorry, baby. I love you so much. We told him thank you for not going last night because we weren't ready. It was hectic and frantic and he turned blue so fast and we couldn't get him back and we weren't ready. I got to feel like what it's like to be alone. Mm -hmm. It was good, Thomas. Thank you. I needed you. It's happening, honey. It's happening. He's not breathing. His heart's pounding, but he's not breathing. I think this is it, Mama. I hope so. <laughs> Daddy, it was just a breath. Check his heart. It's, uh... 1054. 10.54. My poor boy. Oh, my poor boy. He's gone. He's gone for sure. He just took a big breath, baby. Oh, God. This is how many times now? Four? Please. It's okay, sweetie. Might it be the way God wants it to be? He died on my chest, baby. How am I going to let him take him? I don't know if I can do that. It's just going to feel so strange. I know. My arms, my belly, they're both empty. We knew it would be a hard road, but I think sometimes when you make the toughest decisions, you can get the greatest joy out of those. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. We didn't not terminate because we were hanging on to some sort of hope that there was a medical mistake or there was going to be some sort of medical miracle. We didn't terminate because he's our son.